Okay, this is the lineup for part two of my cheap laser pointer comparison. It's also the order that these lasers will be appearing in the beam shots later. These are all 532 nanometer lasers that I'll be comparing, uh, with the exception of the three on the right, which are 520 nanometer. Uh, in the last video, we looked at the model laser 301 and laser 303 lasers over here, these five. Um, from left on the end here, we've got a laser 303 from the laserpointerstore.com. We got a laser 303 from eBay. We got a laser 301 from eBay. We got a laser 301 from laserpointerstore.com. And we have a rechargeable laser 303 style pointer from Amazon under the brand name Fobsurd. I've got a Gatling style uh, laser here from eBay. I've got a pin style laser from laserpointerstore.com and I've also got this model 851 from laserpointerstore.com and these four are all from Amazon. I think this is under the brand Evitri. This is under the brand Foodox. This is under the brand Deny Buy, which I think was the number one overall Amazon pick. And this one right here is under the name Cowjag. So I'll be comparing all of these to these more expensive, more powerful 520 nanometer direct diode lasers. Uh, we've got a 240 milliwatt from Bartlett Unlimited, uh, their stainless steel series. We've got a 500 milliwatt from laserpointerstore.com, their model 890. And we've got a 1000 milliwatt or one watt laser from Jet Lasers, their PLE Mini. Okay, as far as power goes, on my laser power meter, the laser 303s came in at about 45 milliwatts. The laser 301s came in at about 120 to 130 milliwatts. The rechargeable laser 303 came in at about 77 milliwatts. The Gatling style came in at about 70 milliwatts. The laser pointer pin came in at about 83 milliwatts. The laser 851 came in at about 70 milliwatts. The IV tree came in at about 120 milliwatts. The Foodox came in at about 60 milliwatts. And it was the only one to come with packaging, which kind of looked like this. The Deny came in at about 108 milliwatts. And the CalJag came in about the same, a little over 100 milliwatts. And as far as the 520 nanometer direct diode lasers, we've got a 240 milliwatt here from Bartlett Unlimited. We got a 500 milliwatt from laserpointerstore.com. And we got a thousand milliwatt laser from Jet Lasers. So this is the setup for the beam shots. The stand of trees in the background is about 200 meters away. And after the beam shots, we'll look at the pet toy comparison. We'll look at some quick daylight shots and we'll go over some safety and I'll give a brief overview of my thoughts about all these lasers. So here we have the lasers in the order we've been discussing them. We've got about a dozen cheap 532 nanometer DPSS lasers alongside the three 520 nanometer direct diode lasers on the right. And what jumps out right off the bat are the power differences, but I'm also trying to compare the beam qualities between the DPSS lasers and the direct diode lasers. You might notice that the three direct diode lasers on the right have beams that are not only wider, but also have more divergence, meaning that the beams spread out more with distance. Also, the dot created by the direct diode lasers are shaped more like a line or a rectangle, and because of divergence, they become noticeably larger with distance as well. So what I really appreciate about the 532 nanometer DPSS lasers is that the beams are thin and thread-like, and the dot is small and circular in shape. And even though they're small and thin, they seem to go on forever. And because they're not as bright or powerful, they almost seem a little more inconspicuous. That said, if you use them at night and there's any amount of humidity or fog in the air, they will rival much more powerful lasers and give a really nice effect. Another difference between these two classes of lasers is the color shift that happens between the 
520 nanometer and 532 nanometer. The camera doesn't really pick it up, but the 520 nanometer is a little more towards the blue end of the spectrum, whereas the 532 nanometer yields more of a emerald green color. Powerful DPSS lasers are hard to find, and if you can find them, they're usually very expensive. DPSS stands for Diode Pumped Solid State, which means that a diode pumps infrared light through a couple of crystals to get the 532 nanometer green color, and then that light is culminated through a lens into a beam. And this process is very inefficient and requires a lot more power than the direct diode lasers. And direct diode lasers use a diode made of two semiconductors that convert electricity into light and amplify it into a laser beam with the help of a lens. The materials used for the semiconductors determine the color of the light. And this process is actually very efficient and the diodes are cheap to produce. And of course, all of these lasers are way too powerful to be used as pet toys or even as presentation pointers. And I'll demonstrate that using this keychain laser that I bought at a pet store and compare it to one of the 532 nanometer lasers. And you can tell that the green laser is just way too bright and way too dangerous to be used around pets. And you should wear, really wear safety glasses whenever working closely with these lasers. Uh, watch out for the reflections, as you can see here. Um, they'll get you every time. And especially if trying to burn things or even when looking at the dot, you need to put those safety glasses on to protect your eyes because these laser pointers are very powerful. Here's an example of a daylight beam shot using a 301 and 303 style laser pointer alongside the 500 milliwatt, 520 nanometer laser. This is from about 18 meters. And this is the same three lasers aimed at a bridge support about 50 meters away. So my overall impression about these cheap 532 nanometer lasers is that they're all very similar. At least in power and in color. Uh, the hosts do vary a little bit, which I'll talk about briefly. Uh, we got the laser 301 and laser 303 style over here um, and they're nice because they have a focusing ring uh, they have a key lock which uh, prevents accidental activation uh, they run on 18650 batteries it goes in positive side towards the tail cap and the laser 303s come with a star cap and a place to screw in star caps onto the front The Gatling style laser, you see this a lot. It has a tail switch and runs on an 18650 battery as well. Uh, this laser pointer pen from laserpointerstore.com uh, is similar to ones you see everywhere online and it runs on two AAAs, two AAA batteries. So that can be convenient for some. And then they've also got this uh, model 851 laser, which is kind of nice. It's very similar to the uh, laser 301 laser 303 style but a little bit smaller and it has a tail switch which stays on after you activate it and this little guy runs on the smaller 16 340 size batteries goes in positive end towards the tail cap as well And then over here, we've got the Fudox, which is the most expensive of the group and also the largest host. Um, I think it was $22 from Amazon and has a tail switch, which is nice. But the beam did come out at an angle, which I'm sure that just depends on the unit you get. And then the CalJag and, and these other two are all very similar as well. Um, you see these a lot online and they these are the ones that come with the USB rechargeable interface on the back and there's no safety on these so if they're charged and you activate that side switch it's going to be activated uh, but they're all pretty impressive and very powerful and very dangerous definitely not to be used as a cat toy and uh, lasers that should always be used with safety glasses mm -hmm.